And welcome back to Strictly Business. I'm Nathan Ali, the Manager of Government Affairs at the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. May is National Stroke Month, and knowing the warning signs of a stroke can not only save your life, but the lives of your friends and your family. Here to tell us a little more about National Stroke Month is Jimmy Phillips. He's the Executive Director of Marketing for San Joaquin Community Hospital. And Julie Leibel, Executive Director of the American Heart and Stroke Association. Thank you both for being here today. Good morning, Nathan. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's great to have you here. So let's start for those that aren't quite initiated on on strokes. What are some of the warning signs and symptoms uh, of a stroke? So for uh, National Stroke Month, it's very important to know the signs and symptoms, not only for yourself, but for other who, other people who may be around you. Um, we use the anachronism of FAST. So you have to remember FAST. FAST, F stands, F stands for facial drooping. Um, a really good test for someone who may be having a stroke is ask them to smile. Okay. If that doesn't match on both sides of the face, then they may be having a stroke. Oh. Uh, the second thing is A, A for arm. An arm is um, ask someone to hold their arms out. Um, if an arm lists the side, that may be a side of weakness on one side of the body, and that could be a sign of stroke as well. Okay. Um, the next thing is speech. So you can test somebody by asking them to recite something they should know, like their uh, phone number or their address. Mm -hmm. If they're confused or if they're incapable of s saying it, then that could be a sign that they're having a stroke. Um, the T stands for time. It's, in it's essential if you've identified that someone is having a stroke to call 911, not to drive them to the hospital or um, call your doctor, or call 911 to get emergency care immediately. Time is of the, as, as of the essence. Okay. And something that Julie touched on there, um, you know, a lot of people wonder what a stroke is. You right. know, they've heard the term, but, you know, what is it? You know, the easiest way to think about it is if a heart attack is a blood clot in the heart, mm -hmm. that a stroke is a blood clot in the brain. I see. So it's the brain equivalent to what happens in the heart with a heart attack. And something Julie touched on is the idea of the differences between a stroke and a heart attack, a heart attack is inherently felt by the individual. You know you're having the warning sure. sign, whether it's the traditional with chest pain. The tingling yep, in the arm. Yep. But with a stroke, so often, it's the person with the person having a stroke that recognizes it. So whether you think you're going to have a stroke or not, you know, being around your grandparents, your parents, sure. any anybody um, that is in that core target population, it's essential to know the FAST acronym. Um, and not all of us are out the woods either. We just um, had an individual at an event that we um, partnered with recently, our Saving Strokes event, 21 years old oh, and had a stroke. So it really can affect everybody. Now, are, since you, you mentioned, are there certain segments of the population that are maybe more susceptible to stroke? Uh, African-American ethnicity is absolutely more susceptible to stroke. Um, and it's just, you know, it's important also to know your risk factors. Okay. Um, a really key risk factor is high blood pressure. Um, so if you are, if you have high blood pressure, then you're more susceptible to having a stroke. If you have um, AFib, you're also more susceptible to having a stroke. Um, so knowing your risk factors is a, is a really key element. Okay. And as is, you know, I, I think it's really important that people understand that, you know, you can't do a hundred per percent to ensure that you'll never have a stroke, but there's a lot of things you can do to greatly decrease your risk. Sure. And that starts with the basics, eating well, exercising, um, making sure that you're doing things to control your high blood pressure. It's absolutely something that there's a lot of things that we can do to prevent it from happening in the first place. Okay. Now is the stroke, is that the leading cause of death in Kern County or do we, do we have details on that? It is not the leading cause of death in Kern County. I know nationally no. it recently dropped, it recently actually, dropped, which, is, yes. which is good news. It's, it's not as fatal. Stroke is not as fatal. There's still a high occurrence of stroke. Stroke is the leading cause of disability. Oh, I see. So you can't have a stroke and then have decreased capacity. And so that's a big concern. It's not necessarily fatal every time. Um, it is number five leading cause of death. Mm -hmm. um, now, stroke and heart disease um, are more deadly than all forms of cancer combined. So it is our number one heart you know, health risk. Sure. Something that, to be aware that of. That idea of time plays a huge role. It's what we at San Joaquin Community Hospital, when we became the first stroke center in Kern County in 2007, it's hard to believe We've only had certified stroke yeah. care in Kern County for eight years right. now. Um, but that is all about the time element. 
It's about having a 24 seven team that responds when the patient is being transported. We communicate with EMS and administering the stroke treatments as quickly as possible because the most of the time, the level of rehab that a person has to go through, the level of long-term disability is directly proportionate to how long that stroke went untreated. Mm -hmm. So treating that stroke fast is going to greatly increase the chance for a full recovery. Okay. You mentioned the stroke, uh, the stroke center at San Joaquin. Talk a little bit about the, the decision to, to, to create a stroke center, like you said, only yeah. eight years in yeah. Kern County. Talk a little bit about the, the impetus for the Stroke Center and, and what it does for the community. I'm super passionate about this. You think about our mission as a whole is to keep healthcare in Kern County. Right. People not have to go to Los Angeles, not have to go up north to Fresno. It's the same thing that has driven us to create a burn center, a cancer center, and our Stroke Center back in 2007 really started this wave. Right after we built our new tower, we said we looked at Kern County and said, what are the gaps in healthcare mm -hmm. here? The idea that we didn't have for a city the size of Bakersfield, a certified stroke center, it's just ridiculous. And so San Joaquin set out to implement all of the protocols necessary. It's not an easy thing to do. It's a, you know, it's a year-long journey um, to get to this level. But what's great is we're about to announce, um, just in a couple of weeks, we're going to hold a press conference to announce that for the fifth year in a row, we've been recognized by the American, Associ um, American Stroke Association as a gold-plus standard stroke center, meaning we provide the highest level of stroke care um, here in Kern County. So not only have we brought that level of care to the community, but we've continued the level to raise the level of quality. And that, that again, you know, it, it's one thing to talk about awards and accreditations and all that. It speaks to people's lives being saved sure. first and foremost and getting them back to a hundred percent as many times as possible. Well, and when you mention time really, especially with a stroke being of the essence, not having an ambulance ride or a helicopter flight to LA or to Fresno. I mean, those, those minutes are precious and I, they can save lives, I'm sure. And something that's been an extension of the stroke center that we started in 2014 is we're now providing teleneurology, telestroke services mm -hmm. to both Delano and Ridgecrest. Oh, great. So we partnered with those hospitals. In the past, if a person had the symptoms of a stroke, Hall would bypass their community hospital and take them to Bakersfield, mm -hmm. um, to San Joaquin, for example. In the case of Ridgecrest, that's an hour and a half drive. That's the same thing if as somebody... You, if, you put, if you put your foot into right, it. Right, yeah. right. That's the same thing as somebody from Bakersfield having to go to L.A. Right. So what we've done is we've created a telemedicine program where they can essentially tap into our stroke center and be diagnosed from their hospital. In most cases, they can receive that treatment at their hospital via telemedicine instead of having to be transported and only get transported in the most severe cases. Outstanding. So that's so another great... It really is a benefit, not just to Bakersfield then, but to the entire county. Absolutely. I mean, it's such a... A, a broad geographic area that, that's able to be served. So that's just outstanding. Um, <clears throat> we talked a little bit about whether or not some of the risk factors of strokes. What, what are some other things that you can do to sort of prevent your risk of stroke? Is it like taking an aspirin for heart attacks and things like that? So we have something called Life's Simple 7 through the American Heart Association. So you can look that up at www.heart.org, Life's Simple 7. And there's seven things that you can do starting today to reduce your risk of both heart attack and stroke. And um, the first thing is not smoking. Okay. Um, smoking increases your risks dramatically. So if you're a smoker, quit. Uh, the second thing is physical activity. Even just 30 minutes a day of walking, um, not having a sedentary lifestyle, which we typically do, um, but 30 minutes a day of activity. You don't have, a, have to run a marathon, but just a little bit of activity every day will reduce your risk. Um, healthy diet. That especially in, ex includes um, low-sodium diet. There's a lot of salt that can be in um, processed foods. So healthy diet, fresh, fresh fruits and vegetables, body weight, um, keep a healthy BMI. So if you're overweight, take steps to lose weight, and that'll help considerably. And then you have to know your numbers. You've got to control your cholesterol. You've got to know your high blood pressure, and you have to know your blood sugar, and all of those are um, elements that can affect. Okay. So... Now, let's say, unfortunately, a patient does have a stroke and there's the immediate treatment. And, Jimmy, maybe you could speak to this with the hospital. What are some of the long-term 
rehab facilities or things like that? What are some of the, the longer term programs that San Joaquin might offer? So San Joaquin doesn't offer post acute mm-hmm. care. We partner with health, with facilities like Health South, okay. where our stroke patients go for you know when they have to be there for long term, you know some weeks, sometimes month in right. terms of rehab. So many times it has to do with relearning motor skills. Re, you know, relearning how to talk because speech can be impaired. And it just depends on the degree, right. um, how long the rehab is going to take. Some people never fully recover. Um, but once again, that time element, calling 911, you know, uh, people call 911 for some really dumb things. <laughs> if they you do. think you're having a stroke yeah. or if you think someone with you is having a stroke. That's not a dumb he- thing. No, mm-hmm. don't make, hesitate. Make the phone call. Even if you're wrong, right. don't hesitate. Right. Better to... Uh, to be wrong and have have somebody come and check you out than, Absolutely. than, than Absolutely. lose mm-hmm. the uh, lose that time. So talk a little bit, if you would, Julie, about National Stroke Month. What is the goal here? So the goal really is to teach everybody about the health risks of stroke and mm-hmm. the, and the fact that it is one of our you know you know number five leading risk of um, or health risk and and um, leading death. Um, and uh, <laughs> so. Um, Sorry. Um, and, and we just wanted to uh, build awareness and educate people about the signs and symptoms. That's the most important thing. And really to save lives because of that. Um, 800,000 people this year in the United States will have a stroke. Oh, wow. And that's a big number. You know, for me, that's hard to wrap your, your head around that number. But if you think about it, um, it's five 747s crashing down. Those are the, that's the amount of people that will have a stroke this year. Oh, so right. we've got to be aware, and we have to be aware not only for our own health, but for the health of our loved ones. And are there some programs or events that tie into National Stroke Month that will help get this message out? Yeah, the American Stroke Association, along with San Joaquin, we're partners for our Together to End Stroke initiatives. Every work week we're going to be releasing new education, helping the community understand um, you know, both how to prevent, respond, identify another people specifically at the end of the month, May 28. It's a good time to mark your calendars. Now we're going to have, um, we have a community lecture series that we do every month that covers a different health topic. And we host it at San Joaquin community hospital in May. It's on stroke. Um, and how to prevent a stroke, respond to a stroke, and what San Joaquin is offering that differentiates us as a stroke center in the county. So we had an event a couple of weeks ago, and this story just um, boggles my mind every time I heard it, um, in um, February for National Heart Month. Uh And a lady attended that event and went home that night and told her husband, hey, if you're ever experiencing any of these symptoms, I mean, it sounds cliche, but she just said, I know you're a guy. You're not, you're not going to think I, don't. I can tough it yeah, out. Exactly. I can tough it out. So two days later, he was chopping wood in his backyard, started to experience the symptom of a heart attack, tried to power through it, but decided he was going to call 911 on the way to the hospital. He actually coded, which means they had to use the, you know, the, the paddles, yep, right? Exactly. Okay. And then in the hospital three times again. But today he's almost completely recovered and back to work because he made that call to 911. So that came directly from our community education series. So again, this isn't just for you. Right. This is for your family. Well, and it's that, you know, that awareness, that bringing it front of mind. I mean, in that scenario you just outlined. If if this had been something that oh yeah I heard about that once I I know I, I don't need to know about the warning signs yeah, of a heart attack yeah, yeah, yeah. It, but you keep it front of mind and then people start to to think about it so um, anything else Julie you can tell us about National Stroke Month how people can get involved sure um, you can also get involved with uh, an event that we're doing in October called the Heart and Stroke Walk okay um, if you'd like to raise funds for the American Heart Association American Stroke Association and you can check that out at www.bakersfieldheartwalk Dot com. And that's just a culmination. You could start building your yes. team and raising funds now. You don't have to wait till October. That's just the day that's of. That's the right? day of. Yeah. So build teams and raise funds for that to help uh, build awareness. It's also just a great day to learn more. So similar about. to Relay for Life. Okay. Yes. Great. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And um, uh, great information there as well. Uh, once you register on our. Uh, bakersfieldheartwalk.com webpage, we will send you more information about signs and symptoms and how to lead a more healthy lifestyle as well. 
Well, the more we can do to sort of spread the word about stroke awareness and ways to prevent it, that, that, like you said, saving one life or just cutting down on that time makes all the difference in the world. So Jimmy Phillips, San Joaquin Community Hospital, Julie Leibel with the American Heart and Stroke Association. Thank you so much for coming in today. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Nathan. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back after this with more Strictly Business. So stick around.